Hi guys, Dave here, AF5DN. And if you have a Yesu 817 radio, you will uh, probably have heard of the Z817 Auto Tuner by LDG. <clears throat> this is a very good auto tuner. It works really well. And uh, you don't have to use it just with the, the uh, FT817. Uh, pretty much work with any QRP type uh, transceiver but for me it has one flaw and that is it runs on double A batteries four double A batteries and there's no door to get to it <laughs> you have to take that apart with the screws to get it inside and change the double A batteries now there's a couple of problems with that for me number one I don't really like having double A batteries inside my equipment I've had problems in the past with batteries exploding and causing corrosion. Uh, but also I'm going to be mounting all this equipment inside a metal can and I don't want to have to take the can apart, take this apart, change the batteries and put it all back together. I'm going to be using a larger battery like, uh, like one of these guys here to power the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these little barrel jacks and I'm going to mount it on here and take a 12 volt to 6 volt uh, step down regulator and uh, mount all that inside here. Now this little uh, this little barrel jack <clears throat> has a, it's a three prong and uh, one pin will disconnect when you when you put the barrel connector in it. Now another uh, modification that I've seen on another video was a gentleman took uh, and because this is plastic and ran uh, aluminum tape all through the inside of the case. Now I posted on several different forums, a couple of YouTube, uh, Yahoo groups, uh, a couple of Facebook groups. Has anyone ever had a problem with uh, RFI in these <clears throat> and the answer was no <laughs> but I, but I'm gonna have the damn thing apart so uh, I've decided to go with copper tape not aluminum tape and I'm gonna go ahead and coat the inside of the plastic with the with the copper tape not that I think it'll do any good but uh, just because it couldn't hurt anything so that's this project. Let's see if we can get going on it. Okay, just a quick overview of what we're going to be doing is this barrel jack that I'm using is uh, very similar to this in its uh, pictorial diagram. And the center pin is not switched. The uh, barrel contact is what is switched on this particular jack. So what we're going to be doing is uh, taking the ground from the internal 6 volt battery pack on the Z18 and coming to the barrel jack switching through to the Z18 control board with the 6 volts out of the battery pack essentially with the plug disconnected with nothing plugged into this guy the internal battery pack will act just as it does today However, when we put in a plug into the barrel jack, this connection will open, essentially isolating this ground line from the Z817. We'll then take 12 volts in to the 12 volt side of the regulator. Uh, the ground, of course, will contact ground. We'll also use the same ground line for the output of the 6 volt regulator and that will also be tied to the ground on the Z817 and then we'll take the output of the 6 volt regulator to the circuit board where the 6 volt is. So essentially this circuit, this jack is going to be performing two functions. It will allow us to bring 12 volts into the regulator but when there is nothing plugged into it uh, it will switch ground and allow us to run the internal battery pack. 
Okay, for the first step in this process, we have to disassemble the, the Z817. So to do that, we flip it on the bottom and remove four screws. You can turn it back over and remove the top cover. And you can see here is the, the battery pack. Now, we need to remove the batteries. I'll just set those aside for now. Okay, now we need to determine exactly where we're going to be mounting everything. The uh, barrel jack. Uh, we'll be mounting right back here in this corner. So we'll have to uh, end up drilling a hole in the this back plate. The regulator, if you can see the, the lid cover closes like this, there's a fair amount of room right in this area. So we're going to be mounting the regulator to the top cover. So that when it closes, it will not interfere. All right, so we need to uh, start the disassembly process of this unit. I'm working on a static pad and I'm static grounded. Okay, because we need to remove this plate and to drill in here, we're gonna have to take the entire circuit board off. We're also gonna have to have the circuit board off to do the, uh, the uh, copper tape upgrade. So let's start by removing the battery pack. The battery pack is uses double sided tape so you may have to play with it just a little bit to get that to pop off. You can see there's the double back tape. We'll remove this and replace it with fresh tape when we go to do the reinstallation. We have four screws to remove. Now the circuit board and the front and rear plate should just lift off the bottom case. Okay, so the first piece I'm going to be doing is the uh, the front plate. This is plastic. So the first, what I'll first do is get an approximate measure and trim this with my electrician snips. Let's start by peeling one side. Now this copper tape is very thin and it will roll. So I'm not going to pull the entire thing off or all at once. Let's get it laid on here and then work our way down. Again, what I'm trying to do is not have any any air bubbles. Yeah, I went a little crooked, but we've got a large enough area to work with that we're okay. Okay, there are any number of tools that you can use, an X-Acto blade, any sort of a sharp knife. What I'm going to be using is just a standard utility blade. And I'm putting this on this glass block so that I don't cut into my static pad. Let me just trace the front here. to roll over it's no problem. I smooth over the edges. Okay, 
So the holes, just by pressing down firmly, you can see the pattern of the holes start to appear. You can do the same thing, just gently trace the inside of these holes. And there we go. Step one is complete. Okay, so I'm starting with the bottom. And I've done the same thing. I've just approximately cut out a piece wide enough to go across here. Uh, the reason I'm doing it this direction and not this direction uh, is because I think it will be easier for me to deal with two holes uh, at a time instead of, if I went this way, I'd have four holes to deal with. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, take a little sharpie and mark right here on the copper uh, where these two pins are and uh, try to make a small cutout so that I can I can get this up closer to the edge. If you're wanting to do this, the original video showed this being done with aluminum tape. And aluminum tape may be a little thicker than this. Might actually be a little easier to work with. I'm not not 100% sure of that, but it's a possibility. All right, so I'm going to start right here. And we just continue the process, making sure we have an overlap. Okay, I've determined that this copper tape is very thin and it's sort of hard to work with. So um, I was going to cover the top with the uh, with the copper and then mount this and drill the holes, but I've decided to go ahead and drill the holes first and then put the copper on it and then just cut out the holes, uh, the copper out of the holes. Now I went ahead and tied the. Uh, the two ground lines together and I've determined that the batteries um, you have to kind of look here the way this sits on the, the machine this would be the top front so if I mounted it over here which there is room I'd really have to be fighting with these uh, wires so what I've decided to do is to uh, turn it this way and that way the battery case can set here without having to, to fight with these wires <clears throat> it gives me a little bit more room to, to maneuver here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my favorite tool here the center punch and just mark where I'm going to put these holes at. Nice two little dimples there. And we're going to drill these out. Okay, so I've decided that to mount this in there, I'm going to be using these pop rivets or blind rivets as they're uh, sometimes called. So the ones I'm going to be using are 8 one eight inch rivets. So I've got a 1 8 inch drill. That's the size of hole I'm going to be putting right there. Let's see if we can drill that out. Be sure and check out part two 
and see if I destroyed a $110 auto tuner. Thanks for watching.